helping to take your careers, uh, your skills to the next level. This is upskilling uh, on a completely different level altogether. And it's the courtesy of all the team behind the great concept that is. We will be uh, launching a new lifestyle affordable product which will come onto the screen in a moment. <laughs> this one's very exclusive as, as well, apparently. Um, here we are. A01 is the name of this new product. It will be launched across the Emirates, affordable for the more design conscious, discerning customer. A sort of more contemporary industrial look that we haven't tried before, certainly in Abu Dhabi. I'm moving to uh, the island of Yas, we talked about collaboration. Now, Eldar has incredible talent within its organization, many of which I hope you've had a chance of meeting uh, on this occasion. Now, some of you who follow Eldar uh, more closely may be aware that in recent months, we have acquired two new assets in Russell Cayman, two new hotels, the Rixos and the Hilton Hotel. Our beach club residence, which will be a resort style living, sits adjacent in between those two hotels. It's going to be a fun, lively, active lifestyle. New product, high in the mountains of Jabal Jace, uh, for those customers who prefer you know, a, a higher standard of living. And of course, it's going to come. We are going to launch Aldar in Dubai and not today, but maybe next time, maybe before next time, I'll be able to uh, divulge where and what we will be releasing in Dubai. Learn ideas that will have you help you double your income and triple your impact. About half the room. I think I'm in the wrong room. Right? <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say with great love and respect, and take lots of notes, take lots of notes, and we can take pictures afterwards. So, put away your phone. I know you've had a great year. I know there's lots of things to celebrate, like the property market in Abu Dhabi is strong. Is that right? I understand that um, overseas investors are very excited. Is that true? I understand that you, as I get a little hard on the, it worked. Um, I understand that Aldar Properties has paid out one. I'm not saying what you think. I think it's incredibly important to be real. But if you have no enthusiasm, your people, the people you serve, your customers, will not buy any enthusiasm. And one of the things I think is very important for you to do is to protect your inspiration and love. But I'm going to challenge you. Make a decision today to strip out the complexity and the busyness of your life so you turn down the noise and you can start to hear the signal. And that's all about leadership. We're going to start off with Northern Ireland. A little while ago, I was in, what are your habits when no one is watching? How enthusiastic are you when no one is watching? And when no one was watching, Joey Dunlop would take the trailers that would carry his motorcycles and fill them with food and drive to Romania to feed hungry orphans. Fitness. What if those things that you don't have time to attend to? What if on the last hour of your last day, you realize those are actually the most important things. <laughs> and what if the things you now think are the least important things? Playing with your phone, keeping up with not notifications, how many social media followers you have, what kind of car you drive. What if on the last hour of your last day those things were the least important? You know, my father shared something with me that I think will resonate here in Abu Dhabi. And my dad said, Robin, when you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. 
He said, son, live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. When you... When you viscerally, seriously commit to being an instrument of service to the people that you serve, that's when your income and impact gets to completely seemingly insignificant contributions when done consistently over time lead to stunning results. I'll repeat it again. Small, daily, seemingly insignificant contributions when done consistently over time lead to stunning results. Income, triple your investment in two core areas, your personal mastery, because you will never go any higher than you are. If you have a story, how many people have money scars? We all have money scars that our mothers, our fathers, well-intentioned, but half the room. You're in a dangerous place because it's human instinct not to leave the safe harbor of the known. You're already successful, why should you do more? When you are successful, it's easy to continue to use your winning formula. Do you all have a winning formula that you've used? Of course. The moment you keep using your winning formula, you are on the path to obsolescence. The way you sell, the way that you talk, your protocols, your systems. Oh, I watched a, a documentary which is uh, probably your children, some of your children. And the, uh, the little boy wanted to play with his father, but the father was too busy reading a newspaper. To be here before we get started, because we're going to have some fun. And that's a good looking crowd of brokers. Oh my God. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a, th a special, special thanks uh, to Aldar for having me out here. What an incredible organization. I am absolutely honored to be on this stage today, uh, and I appreciate everybody's time coming out to listen. And I hope that you leave here. Growing up, I was obsessed with mentors. How many people have a mentor in their life? Okay. Well, for me, I was obsessed with mentors. I always like to surround myself with successful people because I always knew that if you surround yourself with success, you two are gonna rise to the occasion. So every day when I would deliver mail to the people who were successful in the company that I delivered the mail to, every time I got a paycheck, I would put it aside and I would beg the people to let me take them out to lunch. Let me take you out to lunch and pick your brain and learn from you. And that's what I did. And the interesting thing was, the place that I was delivering mail to, it wasn't a real estate company. But everybody I took out to lunch was making extra money on the side in real estate. Now that piqued my interest because I said, how can you be so good at something, but, but also uh, make money in real estate? And so what I did, I strapped on my rollerblades, I rollerbladed home, and I went to my older brother, Matt, and I said, Matt, we gotta get into real estate. And you know what he says to me, typical older brother? He goes, great idea, genius, we're broke. Okay, all right, well then let's figure this out. That house and turn it into a, a bedroom, to add a bedroom, added value, and that's what we did. That time we spent about $30,000 and we put it back on the market. It took us a little longer, but we put it back on the market about six months later and we sold it for $900,000. We're two for two. If you ask us, we were multi-millionaires. So here we are, we're making money. I had this really late at night. I said, look at this. And I took the camera and I looked around. I said, we're gonna buy a house here. And she said, uh, uh, she said, well, what's that house behind you? And I said, oh, no, no, that, that's the presidential palace. We, we can't afford that. But I love it here. All right, so anyways, I'm walking around Beverly Hills, the streets of Beverly Hills, because I want to mortgage the big houses. I want the big bucks, the big commissions. And I joined a company 
Because there were a lot of mortgage companies at that 8 time. 8 a.m. all the way till 6 p.m. Because legally, we couldn't even call after 6. Eventually, I start closing deals. My first loan, my second loan, my 10th loan, my 20th. I never stopped working. Six months into it, I'm the top mortgage broker in this Beverly Hills you know, elite firm. Now, at that time, I've been in the business for six months. ADD kicks in. I decide I'm ready to start my own company. So that's what I did. And I drove around and I found an office space. It was 10,000 square feet. And it was tough because I kept on trying to do uh, uh, something to make money quickly. I had this, this mindset of, uh, I gotta get rich quick, right? That was the mindset that I had at that time. We did a lot of jobs where he ended up even losing more money. In fact, I'll save you the story, but uh, the next, we were driving down Sunset Boulevard in, in California, and there was a Christmas tree lot during December, and they were selling Christmas trees. And, you know, everybody's, go, oh, okay, I'll buy one. And I looked at my brother, and I go, Matt, what's the next holiday? And he goes, Valentine's Day. I said, okay, well, let's do this, because that guy looks like he's making a lot of money selling Christmas trees. Let's go buy roses and sell them during Valentine's Day and we can charge people more. We could flip roses. So before we were flipping houses, now we're flipping roses. He said, what do you love? And it was funny because at the time when we were broke, my brother and I used to walk through houses on the weekends. In Los Angeles, we have open houses on Sundays. Everybody drives around and they walk through these houses and uh, you know that's where you meet a lot of buyers. But we used to do it, even though we were broke, because we thought that it would help motivate us to join. To join is actually owned by a very famous person. You guys may have heard of him. Uh, his daughter is Paris Hilton. You guys know who Paris Hilton is. Her dad is Rick Hilton. Rick comes from like real estate royalty, right? Where I'm from. And Rick owned the company, and I remember sitting in front of Rick, my brother and I, and we were broke. And uh, he goes, uh, well, guys, I have bad news for you. We don't hire any new brokers. We go, well, and very quickly, you know, I kicked my brother under, under the, the table because we were just trying to do anything to succeed. I go, oh, no, no, Rick. We, we've actually sold a lot of houses. In fact, we've sold it at like 12 of them. Little did he know, all 12 were our own, and on the 12th one, we lost everything we had. But it got us into the door. So here we are in this corner office. I swear it was the janitor's office. They moved the, you know how much we sold the next six months? One, one house. And I can tell you everything about that house. I can tell you the street, the price, the, the length of the escrow, how much money they put down, who they were. Because let me tell you something, I needed that commission like I needed air at the time. And we did that deal. The next year, we sold $12 million worth of real estate. Now, as you know, that's like one house in Abu Dhabi. Okay? But it was $12 million. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, all right. Well, the next year, we started to rock and roll a little bit. We're feeling good about ourselves. We're doing pretty well. Next year, we sold $38 million worth of real estate. And then the next year, we're learning from everything we're doing, from the good stuff, from the mistakes, Next year, we sold 88 million. Year after that, we sold 150. Year after that, we sold 200. Year after that, we sold 280. Year after that, we sold 500 million. Year after that, we sold 780 million. Last year, we were the number one brokers in America. And my brother and I worked every single day of the year and we sold $1.464 billion worth of residential real estate. $4.1 million in sales every single day. And it was crazy because we got to this point, right? We're at like 900, well, actually it was earlier. It was like 700-ish. I look at my brother and I go, fourth quarter, we got one quarter left. Fourth quarter, I said, we're gonna break a billion. And we never stopped working. And it was crazy too, because uh, we got a call. He's a hedge fund guy. 
If I could go back, I would be a hedge fund guy. Okay, you know, those guys, they make a lot of money. She says, looks at me, goes, I love it. I go, me too. <laughs> he says, write it up. So, so I write it up. I send it over to Tom, $10 million. Tom, what do you think? Oh, I appreciate it, man. Go back at 11.75 million. I go, oh, okay, cool. So I go write it up for 11.75 million, send it over to John. John, 11.75 million, what do you want to do? Go up to 10 and a half, 10 and a half, point to 11 and a quarter, 11 and a quarter, down 11 and one. Oh, it's like, let's see, I met Tyler at 6 a.m. in the morning on the treadmill. It's about 3.50 p.m. Tyler is leaving town, climbing up on his plane. And he signs off on the deal at $11.125 million. Now in America, you know, we, we don't represent both sides a lot. There's a selling broker and a buying broker. That was a 5% commission for young Josh Altman at the time. That was over $500,000. That deal catapulted me to the upper echelon of real estate deals in LA and that just 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 went through went through the roof. So the reason I'm telling you that story, ready, fire in. There's gonna be a lot of opportunities that present themselves to you. You have to be an expert and be able to recognize that opportunity first. But when you see it, you do not think twice. You take that shot. You don't know me. I need you to get in my car, right now. No? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll give you a thousand bucks to get in my car, right now. I'm like a real estate kidnapper. <laughs> now, I had a small car at the time. He wasn't gonna fit in it anyways. But I did convince him to follow me. We roll up to the compound, the three house compound. I show him, it takes a while. It takes a while to show three houses. He buys it on the spot for 20 million bucks. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. That Josh Allman, he's just lucky. It's just luck. Choose to be lucky. Put yourself in situations where you are rubbing shoulders with the individuals you want to sell to. Choose to be lucky. I didn't go to that Starbucks because I like the coffee. I like Abu Dhabi coffee. I went there because that's where all the people in town go. Choose to be lucky.